This is Pat and Heidi again with Rain Country. And this is part number six. Six. In a questionable series of... A questionable oh, series? Yeah. Uh, part, you know, part six of a whatever part series. <laughs> we'll keep going until we make up things or until you guys tell us to get lost. <laughs> At any rate... So, let part six of how and why we prepare... <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna leave all that in there because that was kind of funny. It was kind of cute. It was adorable. You made a decision to prepare. How do you do that? Uh, how do you work that into your budget? So the best thing you can do is sell everything you have, buy a tent and a bag of uh, <laughs> bag of rice and a <laughs> bag of beans. No, just kidding. Uh, um, that's, that is one option. <laughs> not a very good one. No. <laughs> uh, Mr. and Mrs. Rain would like to cut up every now and then, but. Being prepared is not a foolish endeavor. Um, you know, whether you're preparing for that uh, cataclysmic event, natural disaster, or whether it's an economic uh, collapse you're fearing, or whether it is uh, some pandemic and you think we're going to go into uh, lockdown mode because of uh, The Walking Dead or something like that. Um, whatever your thing is. Or if it's, it's something on a more personal level, like a, a serious illness that causes one or more family members not to be able to get out and earn an income or, you know, or job loss or anything like that. These are very, very common events that happen to people on a daily basis. Around. Right. Obviously, there's multiple stages of preparations. Um, some people can just say, Okay, I'm going to get prepared, and next week they have contractors showing up <clears throat> putting in bomb shelters and, and <laughs> building uh, underground storage for all their food and buying the food. Um, because we all have that kind of money. <laughs> right, and, uh, but the most of us, the majority of us, have to work that into a budget. Yep. And so where do you start? Um, I think the first thing that you have to sit back and consider is... What exactly do I need the most? What's that going to cost me? And how am I going to achieve that goal in obtaining that particular preparation or that uh, uh, particular gadget or widget or whatever it is you think you need? Again, you know, you got to think of those basic needs of food, water, and shelter. Um, are one of those mo are the three of the most important things. So, how do you accomplish these things? The best thing that I can actually think about for you to do is to sit down with a pad of paper and a pencil because sometimes this stuff becomes overwhelming. A lot of us Absolutely. we get into the preparation mindset and we think we have to live life in one day. We have to get all this stuff all of a sudden. And the cold, hard, relevant facts is that most of us don't have the resources to do that. So uh, consider sitting down with a piece of paper and a pencil and say, okay, well, what are my basic needs? Right. And how, uh, what is my basic uh, necessities for the month? And what are my basic desires for the month? Now, you have to sit down and further dissect that into figuring out, okay, well, what are my real needs? What are my, what can I sacrifice? Um, how important is this to me? I mean, I made the joke of selling everything you got and buying a tent and a bag of rice and a bag of beans, but depending on how bad you think that you need to prepare, how urgent is that need, will regulate and set the pace for what what it is that you can do without currently. Um, you know, we joke around about the going out to eat and buying the mochas and the pack of cigarettes or whatever it is you think your vice is, but um, those things might still be your needs. We've we've gone so far as to you know count every little thing that we do. We're very much conscientious on the monies that we spend 
and it's almost a it's well it's a, it's a game to us. It's, yeah, it's kind of fun to be able to figure Challenge. out where can we where can we cut back and right. we actually sit down every morning, have a cup of Mama's jet fuel latte, jet fuel latte and with turmeric, <laughs> <laughs> new and improved. <laughs> yeah, so we sit back and we uh, we consider where we're at every single day, but we really evaluate the things that we can do without. <clears throat> we can't sit here and tell you every little thing you need to cut out of your life. Only you can do that. Right. Um, we went so far as to stop taking prescription medications. Number one, they cost money. Um, and well, they're bad for you. They're bad for you. And we actually feel better because we don't, we haven't taken those things. It was a thyroid medication. This is just advice. Um, we're not doctors. We're not lawyers. We're not uh, full-time bush people. So um, <laughs> what you do to prepare is, is uh, something that each and every individual has to evaluate for themselves and <clears throat> for each area. Um, some people in cold, colder climates have to think a little bit differently than somebody in a warmer climate Absolutely. as far as exactly what you need to prepare for. I mean, again, your basic needs is food, shelter, and water. So we really need to consider um, shelf-stable foods and different things like that. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, and some people think, you know, if you're in the South, there's something I didn't think about in our last video was about the importance of air conditioning. Well, I didn't think to mention that because it is absolutely not an important right. thing for us because we we just don't have hot enough weather here to warrant air conditioning. We might get a few really hot days in summer, but we manage just fine. So moving on to starting with the most important things, you know, I do think obviously if you live in a cold climate, finding ways to heat is going to be very important. Water should probably be your number one thing because you can live a little longer without food than you can water. But for me, the way I like to do things when we started getting into this was getting a little bit of each thing at a time. Now, I didn't stock up on bottled water because of the way I feel about bottled water. You may want to do that. For us, it was setting up our, you know, our rain collection and then um, finding ways to store it safely you know to filter it and store it and we have a whole video about the water and you can find that as part of this series we also have a whole video on food storage and you can also look that one up as well you'll get these scare tactics where people want you to run out and spend thousands of dollars just on freeze-dried foods well, mm -hmm. we didn't do that no um we have purchased freeze-dried foods over the years and have been putting it up and i think it's a great idea but you need to start more simply and, and um, more economically if you're working on a budget. Now, there's a few different ways you can do this. Um, as far as the food, I think it's one of the easiest things because let's just say if you keep a tight budget for your weekly expenses or monthly expenses, however you work it out, for the grocery store. You know, like me, I try to budget $25 a week on groceries and sometimes we we can actually go a couple weeks without having to buy groceries and let's say in that $25 maybe I'm going to spend $20 on stuff we need right away and then maybe the other $5 might be for getting extra or however it works out or let's say it's one of those weeks where you know, maybe your budget is 100 to $200 a week. It's going to obviously depend on the size of your family, what you already have put up, how, what kind of garden you have, which obviously that's going to fit into it too. If you have the ability to garden, that's going to be the best way to save money and to be able to get some food. But if you're just starting out, it, uh, you may, and you don't have a garden yet, you're going to want to start putting food away. So it really doesn't cost that much more, a couple dollars to grab just a bag of rice, grab a bag of beans, or get a couple of cans of food and uh, start putting these away every week or every month. 
Again, it's going to depend on your budget, how much money you have to spend. And if it's one of those weeks where it's like, okay, this week I only need, I normally budget $100 on groceries. This week I really only, I can get by with spending $50 of that just on what we need immediately. And the other 50 can go into purchasing bulk foods. Now, obviously you're going to get your best price on food stored items like, you know, oats and wheat berries and popcorn and whatever it is by buying in bulk. So then what you need to do, this is again a suggestion, is take that extra $50 or extra $5 or extra $2, whatever that amount is, and start putting it away. Putting it away in a, whether it be a jar or in an envelope, however you want to do it, making sure that stays strictly that goes untouched and it's strictly for food storage so that you can save up and buy that 50 pound bag of whichever it, whatever it is that you find most important right away um, and then and that's just obviously food that same method will apply for bigger items if you're wanting to invest in let's say like i mentioned the camp oven uh, and some propane to go with it again put aside set it set in your mind budget on that piece of paper that he was talking about exactly how much money you want to put into preps how much do you think you can cut back on let's say it is you know going out and getting a mocha every day well that mocha right there could buy you maybe a week's worth of food preps alone, depending on what it is you're getting. It's very, very likely it can because it doesn't cost that much for beans and rice. Um, obviously you want more in there than beans and rice, but it, that's always a good place to start and that's why it's always mentioned. Main staples. It's main staples. And, you know, and then making sure that, you know, and if you're starting a garden, then start with herbs, things that you can use to flavor those foods to make them taste, you know, to give them more variety and, and flavor. Um, and herbs are very easy to grow. Thinking of sustainable <clears throat> living as far as this, it's one of your preps. Every ounce counts. Every little, right. every, every nickel that you can put away is, you think, well, you know, it's not worth it. You know, it's the two cents here and a nickel there and five dollars there, you know. But think of your insurance. What can you do, do without? Think of uh, extra vehicles. Okay, can we just... If we have three rigs or two rigs or or even just one vehicle, um, can we cut down on our driving? Can we can we double up on some trips? You know, let's say you're going to the post office and the bank and all that stuff in one day. Uh, you know, you do that stuff every day. Um, the fuel really adds up. The wear and tear on the tires really add up. The oil changes really add up. All these things over a to uh, over a year's period really add up. So. You know, plan your trips. Um, can you do without that? And that's what Ms. me and Mrs. Rain are doing now. We're thinking, okay, um, how can we cut back on our grocery bill just a little bit more and a little bit more so we can accomplish some of the goals that we have? And it's it's amazing. Um, you know, we used to spend a lot more money on, on groceries than right. we do now. And it's just amazing. And I mean, our... our you know, we're not starving to death. Uh, and we I'm buy, definitely not starving to death. But and, and we buy organic stuff. We spend more money per pound on food than we did years ago. But we're buying good quality food. Mm -hmm. And we're not having to buy as much of it. And that's something else, too, to consider. That when it, when it comes to food, if you're buying high quality food that's good organic food that hasn't been sprayed and GMO'd and all that, you're actually getting... A denser nutrient value in that food meaning you need less of it to be able to survive off of it so that's something to consider too is eating healthier right. is going to change you know it might cost more to buy this organic food but you don't need as much of it and then again I, I can't stress enough the the uh, you know the growing getting a garden going and starting with herbs and working up from there and growing simple beans are and peas, I think, are probably some of the easiest things to grow. At least they are for us. Um, I think no matter where you are, though, they, you can find a variety that's super easy. And these are things that can give you lots of protein and, and lots of other good nutrition. 
um, <clears throat> there was something else I wanted to add to, and I mentioned this before on our, I think our debt-free collaboration that we did, and that since he brought up the rig thing, if you have two or more rigs, uh, if they're not something you need to drive on a daily basis, let's say you have this big pickup truck because you need that for going to the dump or hauling a trailer now and then, well, maybe that pickup truck, because that's, that's our case, we have a nice pickup truck, a nice GMC Sierra that sits most of the time because it costs us more to drive that truck. It's more to insure and it's more in fuel to drive it. And so that one, what we do is we keep it suspended on our insurance until we need it. And that saves us like 50 to $75 a month in insurance just doing that alone. It's probably more than that now. When I figured it out years ago, that was how much it was. So I'm guessing it's probably more than that now. And then all you have to do is contact your insurance agent through phone, even if it's just leaving a message. You don't have to talk directly to them. Talk to your insurance company, your agent, to be sure on this, but this is how it works for us. Or I just shoot them an email and say, doesn't matter what time of day, hey, need the truck today. And then when I'm done, shoot them another email that says we can put say we can put this back on suspension and it's all it's all done. And you know, it saves us an incredible amount of mm -hmm. money and a lot of people don't even know that that's an option. So then you can take that money that you're saving on your insurance and put that towards whatever preps you Well, I can want. think of some things that uh, people don't necessarily think about and things like um, those hidden bills that come at the end of the month, you know, like your electricity, right. your water, uh, all these different bills that come at the end of the month and you end up scratching your head when you go to do your ledger and think, man, oh man, how can we make it? Well, something as simple as keeping the lights shut off um, flipping a breaker to um, any of those phantom uh, electrical draws or something like that that you might have in the house. Um, just like we just, have the breakers turned off for pretty much all the electric heat in our house. Right, and I think we mentioned that room. in another video, but uh, some of these videos, the information is going to overlap a yep. little bit because it's all inclusive. Um, but yeah, it, it, even if you think that you're not it's not worth it to try to cut that corner. Um, when you go to the store and you think, gosh, do I need that, uh, well, it's not even a half a gallon of ice cream anymore, but you know, can I do no. without that ice cream? Well, it's only $5 or it's only three bucks. Well, it's $3. I mean, if you're standing in the, standing in the uh, uh, line there at the store and you didn't have five extra cents to pay for all your groceries, that five cents is quite a bit of money. <laughs> so yeah, just think of uh, energy saving, con you know, conservation type measures. Um, we used to throw away a lot of food. Um, we used to get pushed to the back of the refrigerator. I mean, you, you can't buy a small ice box anymore. It's gotta be a, a huge half the kitchen size refrigerator and half, yeah. of, half of what you make ends up in the back. So Mrs. Rain has learned how to cook a little bit less or if she does cook more to last, she'll she'll freeze leftovers or we'll make sure that we're very cognizant of what's in the refrigerator so we don't let food go to waste. Yeah. Um, that has saved us. That has added to that reduced purchasing at the store as far as uh, um, other groceries we have to actually purchase. So we can use that money to further put into... Uh, gadgets and food and and ways of of saving more money um ways of filtering water and and uh, producing electricity i mean you know we have quite a bit put up in solar collection and a lot of people say well you're never going to recover that money but yeah but it's you know in, in in energy savings but you know what it's there when we need it right and um if push come to shove you know, I can call a power company and say, hey, remove the drop out of the yard. Uh, we can get by without it, you know. We might be taking some cold showers and a couple of things, but hey, you know what? If push come to shove, it's something that we can get away with. But um, depending on how severe and how um, serious you are about budgeting and where you're at uh, financial-wise in that budgeting uh, spectrum, you got to you got you have to first define how important it is, and um, 
yeah, please don't get all freaked out, you know, when you guys start thinking, gosh, I need to prepare. Yeah, you probably should. You should have stuff in your car, you should have stuff in your house for emergencies, but you know what? Um, you gotta live day to day too. So you gotta yeah. gotta be happy where you're at. So and don't live in fear. Don't live in fear. We got a video up on that. Um, I think it's right up here. <laughs> or is it over there? I think it's over there. Mrs. Rain probably knows more about that. I don't know anyway. Anyhow. Uh, <laughs> um, anyways, yeah, don't live in fear. Just um, logically, methodically, think of ways that you can cut back on the things that uh, you think are necessities and the things that really are necessities. Right. And I want to add to that because the, the, a lot of times when people first start getting into the prepper mindset and they start looking at articles and they start looking at this and watching YouTube videos and there's people out there selling products of all kinds mm. and a lot of times those products are worthless and they can be expensive and you could probably get by with something that you can scrounge together yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, so really be careful about, I, I mean, I'm not thinking of any one thing in particular. I just remember seeing all these different things. And, you know, when we were first getting into it, and that also can be very overwhelming. Don't let that stuff control you. Just think, okay, you know, again, what do we really need? Let's start from there. And also set yourself a guideline such as, okay, let's start by preparing, getting enough food and supplies to last us three days, then build up to seven days, then two weeks and, and go from there. Mm -hmm. Don't feel like, I mean, they, I think the typically when there's a disaster coming, what they are going to tell you is make sure you have enough food and water for three days. Now, personally, I would say at least two weeks, but three days is a good starting point and it, yeah, start somewhere. it gives you a goal to aim towards, but don't stop there when you hit that three days. Keep building on that and building on that and, and, and uh, just take it, as I said before, in at least the food storage video, take it in baby steps. Don't feel that you have to jump in uh, you know that the disaster is necessarily going to happen. It could happen tomorrow But every little thing that you do right now Even if it's just a couple dollars worth of beans is going to get you that much closer to it um, As far as cooking sources like in our last prep video or actually in number four we talked about alternate sources of cooking and heating well a camp stove you might go online, like I had a link to the camp stove that we have, and we actually have two or three camp stoves. I think one we bought brand new a while back, but we also have one that we picked up for a dollar at a garage sale. A right. dollar. Garage sale. So if you're getting don't... Into, if you're getting into prepping, <clears throat> excuse me, Mama, but when you get into prepping, um, there's so many things out there camp related and uh, yes. otherwise that you can pick up for real reasonable um, at garage sales. So Lots garage sales, um, estate sales are the best. Maybe even some flea markets you might be able to, whatever it is that kind of secondhand type stuff that you can find around you. I mean, I might give you all these links to stuff that you can buy and that's great because that helps support us. But if you're on a budget, be looking at those garage sales. That is an excellent place to start. You, oh, oil lamps. You can get oil lamps and candles galore at garage sales. Always, every, I swear, every garage sale we go to, there's at least one oil lamp and a plethora of candles. So don't pass these things up. Yeah, no matter what they look like, <clears throat> You know, a candle's a candle. It's but, gonna, you um, know, as long as it burns, it right. gives you light. Yeah, well, I've bought, I know, I think probably have three, three little camp, uh, Coleman camp ovens that, you know, you put white gas in, you know, the Coleman, Coleman fuel. Start out with your basics first. Right. Start out uh, buying things that you um, think that, uh, you know, the, the most important things first and work from there. Um, and the thing that we were, we kind of failed on in some respects is the storage of that stuff. 
once you start saying, Initially, ah, I'm yeah. going to buy this, I'm going to buy that, we start buying stuff, you know, and, you start and all of a sudden you open it up and it's got wheels in it or yeah. something like that, and you're thinking, boy, that was a waste of money, you know, but um, uh, really research your storage, your airtight storage, uh, you know, vacuum sealing, uh, canning, Buckets. Uh, you know, your uh, Mylar bags, your uh, gamma lid seals for your buckets and all these different things uh, in order to preserve all these things that you're, you know, saving up so much money to buy. So just be careful when you start going hog wild, you know, you discover a bag of beans really isn't that much money if you stop and think about it, uh, you know, in, in, in retrospect to how much you're getting there. And then uh, you'll find out when you start cutting back, you know, all the set money, you know, penny saved is a penny earned, and you'll find out that uh, you're going to have a snowball effect, and it's going to start to become a fun challenge for you to start uh, cutting back, and you're going to be able to buy more, you're going to buy in bulk, you're going to be able to find different places out there that have it for a little bit less, and yeah, these things take a little bit time to research, but do the research on, on where the best places are. To purchase some of this stuff and um, you know that doesn't mean you have to get in the car and go to the next town over to uh, you know save two dollars on this 50 pound bag of beans I mean you can order a lot of this stuff online or from your local mm -hmm. co-op or uh, you know like some people have a, access to Azure standard I don't know how big a bulk of stuff that they can get through there um, we don't really have access to that here but Glory B used to be one of the big mm. places we got stuff, and again, that runs kind of off of a co-op. Um, but we could get you know 25 and 50 pound bags of flour, beans, rice, whatever from there. Uh, Honeyville is a good place as far as uh, organic wheat berries. They have the best price I've seen anywhere on organic wheat berries. You know, for a 50 pound bag but their prices on other things for the 50 pound bags aren't or 25 pound bags whatever aren't as good as maybe on amazon sure so Definitely. i found by constantly just shopping around or costco um we don't have a costco here which it's actually next town over and we don't go into town very much but you may be surprised to find out there's a lot of stuff you can order from costco dot com and have it delivered right to your door and some some stuff can get there in two days um and walmart yes you know a lot of us kind of have this funny thing about walmart but <laughs> you know i used to boycott them for a long time but when it comes right down to it if you're on a budget and you don't have a walmart next to you you can order a lot of stuff from walmart.com and have it delivered right to your door in a couple of days and it's and you can save big bucks on that going that way. So again, if you're living on a budget and you know, like we can get the organic, I mean, the one thing we do splurge on, um, even though I mostly make our breakfasts from scratch, um, Mr. Rain does like his cold cereal now and then. And um, <laughs> we like, there's some certain different organic cereals that, you know, they're pretty spendy, but we can get them from walmart.com and have them delivered here and save you know with free shipping and save a lot of money on those so that's one of our extra little splurges but um, you can also make homemade granola and that's really cheap too so mm -hmm. but yeah and that's in homemade granola there and that fits right into your food storage because it's easy to make and you can use any of your food storage items to throw something together peanut butter granola I'll have to do a video on that at some point is one of the easiest ones to make and <laughs> it would probably be one of our favorites. Somebody was asking uh, in one of the comments about examples um, of you know how we use some of these different cooking devices and different things. Uh, Mrs. Rain does a lot a of that. Videos. Uh, a lot of her videos um, uh, and this would go into the budgeting aspect of things. If you're heating your house with wood why not use that wood heat to also cook your food, um, to also dry your clothes um, instead of running the dryer? And heat your uh, water. Anything with a heater element in it is going to burn the most electricity. That's where your that's where your power bill comes from. Is anything with a heater element in it? Uh, anything with a motor or a you know, like a dryer element or a hot water tank? Uh, we have our hot water tank on a timer, so it doesn't run, kick on, kick off all day long. Um, 
there's so many different ways to manipulate your uh, budget and some things work for most people some things don't some people are on life support or something like that and you can't afford to cut your power bill off or <laughs> anything like that right. so each and every individual has to evaluate what it is that they can sacrifice um, and make their life a little tougher but also to realize more at the end of the month as far as income is concerned where you can delegate to some right. of these different preparations that you need to well and the funny thing is is these all these different money saving things such as hanging your clothes to dry now around mm -hmm. here you remember we get you know an average of 120 inches of rain per year and up to 160 which means I do hang our clothes to dry year round. How on earth do I do that? Well, I have two clotheslines in the house and then I have a couple other places where I hang clothes um, year round to dry. And so even if you're on grid power rising or you don't have a wood stove, you can still put up some clotheslines or wrap now for me. Uh, that means sacrificing a nice you know, pretty looking eclectic living room because I have clothes hanging everywhere <laughs> to dry. But the amount of money it saves me every month not running the electric dryer is worth it. And that uh, itself is beautiful. <laughs> you know, and, and I, people just have to realize they come over, it's like, hey, you know, this, this is, is how we us. live. <laughs> you know, I, I do try to keep it tidy and, and, you know, as much as possible, but that's just the way it is. And if you're willing to put up with, uh, with something like that, you know, because our, our our wood stove is in our living room. That's why the clotheslines are in there. But you may have a corner somewhere else in a back room or, you know, in in, in a basement or in up, uh, in an attic or whatever. I remember Amy Decision, she used to hang her clothes in her attic because that was where a lot of the heat would go already. And it kept the clothes out of the way the laundry so you know if company showed up they didn't have to look at all their laundry hanging up like uh. here i would like to actually set up the clotheslines in here but there's just not enough uh we don't keep this room heated really so it's just not ideal it's better to hang it in the living room yeah. but the point is is little things like that it might be seem time consuming to do it first but once you start getting the hang of it, pretty soon you start thinking of anything of it. You'll you'll figure out a system and it'll work. And you know, saving fifty to a hundred dollars a month in electricity simply by hanging the clothes, that just think how much you can do with that fifty hundred to a hundred dollars, maybe more, depending on how much laundry you do per month. You don't necessarily have to just revolve around preparation either. Um, and everything and all your goals if you're wanting to get debt free we got our video on that too but uh, all that um, all those different cutbacks will help you achieve your goals in life and uh, help you to uh, tackle some of those larger debts get out of debt uh, you know as far as budgeting is concerned mm -hmm. start with those littlest debts knock those out um, if credit cards are too much of a temptation to you and you can't control them, get rid of them. Um, that's just Mr. Rain's thoughts on it. Uh, um, you know, tackle those debts. That gives you more money during the month. Cut back on things. That gives you more money. And, you know, a lot of these things are kind of generic terms. But like I say, each and every, each and every one of us has our own uh, points of necessity that we have to deal right. with. Um, your climate has a lot, a lot, a lot of factors involved involved in it. Uh, your location, as far as how far are you away from civilization, that has a, a big factor because you're going to be traveling more, spending more money in fuel, mm -hmm. tires, wear and tear on your vehicle, different things like that to get from A to B. Um, family size. Family size, exactly. I mean, so your and budget. And family needs. Family, yeah. Each need. Absolutely. I mean, you might have a, mm -hmm. you know, special needs person in your home and there I mean there's just so many variables so it you know prepping is never it's never a one-size-fits-all mm -hmm. we can we can give you tips other channels other people can give you tips but these are just what has worked for us and and they're not necessarily going to be uh, they're not necessarily going to work for you but hopefully they'll give you a, a starting point 
to build on and then find what works for you and fit that in to suit your lifestyle and your needs. I want to give a <clears throat> quick example on maybe what you know a person might define as a need and a want. Um, as far as far as can I do without this or do I really need it? And that is um, the area of cloth diapers versus uh, star bottle Bob. diapers. And um, so one might think, oh, I, no, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do the cloth diaper thing because you got to wash them, you got to change them, you got to clean them up, all these things. Well, if you sit down and depending how many kids you have, you know, let's just say you have just one kid, one kid that's in diapers. Um, add up the amount of diapers that you change during the day and multiply that times 30 and then determine what a package of diapers might cost you. Well, some people, that's not, maybe that isn't something that they're willing to give up. Maybe it is. It all depends on what, you're, you're, what you define as a need and a want. Um, or a luxury or a sacrifice. So, um, teaching everybody, I you know, might get some comments in here, maybe some pretty rude ones, but uh, um, just ask you to consider what you know what you define right. as a need and want. Uh, so. Yeah. Well, that's very that's very good. There's because there's there's so many things that a lot of times we don't even think about that we can make for ourselves or do because we we've, we've kind of been especially people our generation and younger we've been sort of brought up and oh you just run to the store and buy this stuff it's like well you know your sock gets a hole in it just go buy a new pair well how about learning how to darn those socks and i have a video on that mm -hmm. and i actually uh mr rain didn't think that he would like darn socks and i darned one of his socks and and uh he wore it and didn't even realize that he was wearing a darn sock. He didn't know any I don't like darn difference. socks. <laughs> and me, I actually, once I've darned my socks, I actually like them better. It's a there little... is definitely an art to it. I've had darn yeah. socks before that were darn Lumpy. socks. <laughs> but, but for some of you guys out there, um, as far as um, if you have a knack for fixing stuff, um, that is another way that you can really save. Right. Um, you know, I take it down to the car, sh you know, I take it down to the um, mechanic or do I figure it out for myself? Um, and with YouTube University, you can learn so much. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I'm always a great one for going down to the store and if I need two or three bolts, I'll buy a whole box of them. Um, and that's all great and fine and good. So when times come, that's also a little prep. Um, you know, having fasteners on hand is a great thing, but if you don't have the money, you're really trying to cut back, maybe you should just buy the three. It might cost, you know, the three bolts that you need. It might cost you a little bit more per bolt, but you're you're spending a lot less for those three than you are over the big haul. You're looking at the dollar factor then. Um, I um, have no qualms of using uh, um, used bolts. Uh, I have no qualms uh, welding something back together instead of running down the store and buying a new one. Or if something breaks, I try to evaluate that. It's like, well, do I really need that thing? So if I can do without it, I do without it. I mean, and that's I'm, why Mr. Rain has, we have a, a lot of his videos up of him uh, either making things from scratch or fixing things. And, you know, whether it be something that's metal or wood, it doesn't matter. He's repaired all kinds of stuff or, you know, auto work. And uh, he's not a mechanic. I'm not a mechanic. But <laughs> I don't pretend to be one on YouTube. He's repaired quite a few <laughs> different things on our rigs. Uh, and it's just, it's, man, it saved us so much money. So look into learning how to do things like that for yourself. Even plumbing. Well, sometimes... That clogged sink or tub can be a lot easier to fix than you know that you don't have to call a plumber. And um, Logically think things <clears throat> through and, and like Mrs. Rain said, go go to the U University of YouTube. At do some point we do and we do it uh, to the fullest extent that we can 
and the cheapest extent that we can do it. And so that's why we want to share with you guys some of the things that we do. Right. Okay. Well, I think we've probably rambled enough. Oh, we? yeah, we've talked quite a bit. And probably. there's a lot more to be said about it. Again, um, we've really been enjoying the interaction that you guys have been Absolutely. sharing with us at, in the comments. You guys, um, some of the things we already know, we're just not thinking about putting out there right now. But uh, guys, because yeah, we don't have it. Remember, we don't have a script. We just come in here and let's say, let's talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> and then we tend to forget stuff. <laughs> right. So guys, go through and read those comments. There's a lots of experienced people out there that live in different areas that have different right. ideas. Um, and for you guys that, that know uh, just as much or more than we do, um, Put in your comments in the section Please. below to share with other people and with us. And so uh, some of the things that we forget about, we'll go back and, oh, yeah, yeah, we've got one of those. Maybe we should dig it out and dust it off and try it or exercise Probably it. about budgeting for prepping, how do you uh, budget and put your money towards different prepping? You can put a list, just however you want to put it out there so that the people that want to learn this stuff and us too can learn from you as well because right. this is this, this what makes the community so great appreciate you okay. stopping by like share and subscribe um, watching take care and god bless okay.